This is the Dean the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in again to another episode of the Dean Show. So many misconceptions about the fastest growing way of life in the world today, yet most misunderstood. So we're going to be clearing up some of these misconceptions. Islam calling you to blow up yourself, blow up innocent people. Oh, uh, it was created by a man in the desert. And you know what, they, the Antichrist and all this other phony baloney nonsense that we're going to be addressing here on the Dean Show with Imam John Yahya. We'll be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Back here on the Dean Show, Imam John. Wa alaikum. Now, uh, peace be with you, and we've done a show with you in the past. People can go to thedeanshow.com to hear your story. You're a born-again Christian, before that a Catholic, and then you were in the agnostic uh, phase. You were like, you know what, hey, you know, I'm not digging this, but, you know, I'm going towards what, you know, what's next, agnosticism. I kind of... I believe I don't what's out there you read the Quran verbatim word of God you've even memorized it's a miracle of the Quran <laughs> that people have memorized it and you are not even a native speaking Arab um, but you've memorized this entire book is this true this is a blessing that I was given a very also a responsibility to keep that up but yes I was given that uh, blessing now was your dad and mom half Arab or something no, no, no. Pure uh, bred American. Yeah, born and raised. Yeah. Now that's a phenomenon. You're an American mm -hmm. who didn't grow up speaking Arabic, but you've memorized. That's one of the miracles mm -hmm. of this book, the Quran. It's a living miracle that people, if they're searching the truth, they can come analyze it and they'll see that this can't come from Muhammad or any group of men mm -hmm. or uh, aliens, space Martians, mm -hmm. the devil, as some say. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, you know, nice. this come, you, they'll realize, like you did, that this is from the creator of all that exists. Mm -hmm. Is that what you realize? Oh, naturally. Now, now, let's start off with it because time is short. Let's start off because we're talking about misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Many people have misconceptions about this way of life. That's from the creator. It's not made by a group of men or the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. But for those that believe that Muhammad concocted this. Yes. What do you got to say? You see, the Crusades um, were historically written and they're known to be after Muslims gained prominence and dominance in the political arenas, miraculously toppling the Persian and the Byzantium empires, um, basically taking a third of the civilized world into its uh, realm, um, the Catholic or the Christian Roman group decided we need to start waging wars and to take back and kill all of these Muslims. And by the way, during that time, Muslims and Jews were living together. And as a matter of fact, when these crusaders came, these Christians, um, by the command of the Pope, um, according to his understanding that he's receiving a decree from God to go spread bloodshed in the name of God, on, as, as they believe, who was Jesus and the Father and the Son. So when this happened, there was this, of course, enmity. And so Muslims and Jews fought together defending their lands and everything. And even some of the local Christian priests and people preferred the Muslim just rule over the um, rule of the, um, the Roman Empire. So after that, after that happened, the Crusades did not start there. The Crusades did not stop there. There formed a group called Orientalists. They started to look into history and write it from their perspective in order to discredit Islam in the intellectual arena. To try to develop a theory as to how we can somehow prove or at least make our own evidence to make Islam seem like obviously some false pagan to an extent that they claimed that we worshipped the moon, they said that we worshipped pagan gods, that we said we worshipped Muhammad. They tried to cast onto us the name Muhammadians. And they wrote this in their books in England and France and Germany and Poland and later Portugal and Spain and elsewhere. So um, part of that claim or that attack was to say that Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
was they admit they read history. He was a good young man with good morals and manners, was not evil, was not corrupt, was not even known to lie. His people called him a sadiq al amin the truthful, trustworthy man that they would go to when they would get in corrupt disputes. Um, but at some point they said he got this, uh, they have two stories. And it's interesting, and you should all read Gary Miller's um, analysis of this. It was a great a revert Muslim. Gary Miller, they can well. go, go online, Google, and just put Amazing Gary. Amazing Quran, Gary Miller about Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And so one group says... Muhammad traveled, in the narrations of history, we have two trips. Once when he was a young boy, he went with Abu Talib, his uncle, to the area of Syria, where there is a prevalence of Christian people. One of the narrations which Muslims often try to use as proof, but many of the Muslim scholars of hadith uh, took issue with the hadith, says that there was indeed some sort of a priest or monk that was amazed by Muhammad and was telling him about prophethood. And so they're, they're concocting the story that Muhammad spent time learning about the previous uh, messages of Christianity and Judaism and so forth. Because obviously in Mecca, those are very rare to find anybody that believes it, much less knows much about it. And so after that one trip when he was 12, then whenever he was 20-something, he went with Khadija, who at that point was just the owner of the caravan he worked for, um, and then he went there again. So these are two events that narrate that the Prophet Muhammad went with a caravan. Now, on either of these events, nobody narrates that he spent time studying with any priest. The one story from the beginning when he was 12, right, says that a priest told him, you have the signs of prophethood, or you could be a prophet, and this and that. But there is no discussion that he had long discussions, which you would need to have to form a full book that knows everything about the previous book, right? Especially since you're an illiterate Arab man who doesn't know Aramaic or Assyrian or Greek language, which is what they're speaking over there, a mixture of these three, right? So, um, so that story is, is totally uh, baseless. For Muslims, we believe it to be blasphemy if someone were to say, Muhammad is the founder of Islam. That's blasphemy. Right? We believe that God created the creation and made a system that creation will submit to His will. Mm -hmm. And all of creation will do that except for He will call out to creation and offer it the great trust. It's in the end of Surah al -Hazab. So He says, who will take the trust or the responsibility of having their own consciousness to know right and wrong and then be responsible for doing the right thing? All of creation said no. Everything, animals, suns, planets, everything communicated to God that we're just going to follow your system that you have designed for us. Atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons following their course without any disturbance. We're just going to do what you said and be peaceful in that state. Human being by nature said, I believe that I can take this. And this is what our brothers and sisters from humanity, you hear them saying, that they create that God created man in his image. Obviously, we are not God is not a human or anything that you can imagine. Um, but his image is more of a metaphor that he has this creative ability to control the environment and do what he wants with it. And he can make decisions and conscious decisions about it. And so having that control is something that human beings amongst all other creation have been blessed with. So when he sent these prophets. This prophet's message, all of them, was to submit to the will of God. As a matter of fact, in the book of Matthew in the New Testament, Jesus said to a guy who came saying, Master, Master, Lord, Lord, whichever translation you want to take, He said, Whoever says to me, Lord, Lord, will not enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. Metaphorical Father, that God is the creator of everything. And so... That is, he's clearly teaching, submit to the will of God. It's not just by saying, I'm your Lord or I'm your master as the prophet. You have to do the will of God. So, um, Islam is not something that any human can make up. It is something that God reveals. So going back to Gary Miller, he's, it's interesting because some of the other Orientalists, 
they looked at the arguments that their predecessors made that he got full of himself, used some knowledge he got from Syria, and then developed this religion, which is based in the um, Judeo-Christian uh, tradition. But then they said, but if you read more about his life and his example, he obviously believed that he was the prophet. I mean, when he's staying up all night praying and his feet are cracking from soreness, and Aisha, his wife, be, uh, uh, God be pleased with her, she says, why are you praying all night? God, you're the prophet. Your, your sins have been forgiven. If you ever made a mistake in your life, you know, you're, you're, you're clear. You've been given prophethood. And so then he said, shouldn't I be a grateful servant? When he attained power and political dominance, he could have built a palace and had very beautiful women, but never did he do any of this. His life testified to the fact that he truly believed. So then they developed a new theory. Prophet Muhammad was insane. He was crazy. He was talked to by jinns or de demons or devils. And so they gave him these ideas and so he was fooled about this. So now the other argument that you're saying is, basically you're saying that this man who is possessed by demons or crazy or insane or uh, epileptic or whatever story you're going to make, he basically changed the fabric of history, took a society that was in anarchy and chaos and drunkenness and lewdness, burying baby girls, and then transformed them into a law-abiding people of discipline, of kindness, of mercy, compassion, of justice, defending the oppressed Muslim or non-Muslim, and so forth. Um, this was what happened as a result of his actions. So you're saying some crazy men um, impacted billions of people in world history and, and caused them to be a rightly uh, upright people with good manners and good character. That also doesn't add up. So they keep chasing around that, well, obviously, they say he must have been making this up and he was just good at fooling people that he really believed. But, so it just doesn't end but, in their round, it's like a my, mouse. In the, <laughs> Dog chasing his tail. Yeah. Does, it doesn't make sense. We're, we're going to continue with more. Uh, we got to go to break. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. <clears throat> Everybody, in, deep down, they believe that there is a God. Yeah. And as much as they deny it. If God exists, and He does, if God sends prophets, and He does, if God reveals books, and He does, should He not tell me how to live my life? Doesn't that make sense? They feel more secure and safe now inside the religion of Islam than they ever felt out in the streets. But the best way to bring true, profound happiness, true, profound peace, true, profound tranquility, is by following the guidance that God has given. See for yourself what Islam has to say, because it really is the path to happiness and truth in life. Back here on the Dean Show with Imam John Yahya. That's coming from John the Baptist, mm -hmm. and then it's a messenger of God, just like Jesus was a messenger, Abraham, Noah, mm -hmm. and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all, they came with the same message, worship the Creator, not His creation. And that is what you concluded from the Quran, verbatim word of God, that we believe, just like Jesus believed, and His followers, true followers, and Moses and their true followers, and Abraham and those true followers, we're continuing the legacy of worshiping yep. only God, just the Creator, not His creation. Some people are upset about this because, you know what, we're saying, look, in a kind and benign way that, look, Jesus is not God. Yeah. Never claimed to be God. Mm -hmm. We're not putting Jesus down. We love Jesus. You can't be a Muslim unless you're Jesus, right? right we right. believe Jesus was Muslim because mm -hmm. he submitted to, the God, to mm -hmm. God, and that's what a Muslim is. So they make up all these different false accusations mm -hmm. about Islam. We're clearing those up here on the Dean Show. I really want to get to more of them because mm -hmm. there's so many, but we can't touch upon all of them. So you talked about one, mm -hmm. and then we'll direct people where they can go for further mm -hmm. assistance on mm -hmm. this to clear up these false fallacies. Did anyone, just a couple more points, and we've got to move on to the next. Did anyone yell out? Because there's a lot of information in the Quran, prophecies, mm -hmm. accuracy, scientific mm -hmm. facts, mm -hmm. not fiction. It's all mm -hmm. in this book. So did anyone, if he's copying from someone, yell out and say, hey, he got it from me. You know how somebody want credit. Is there anyone who yelled up and said, no, I said that, I gave it to him. And that's, that's a very interesting point, that when the people of Mecca disbelieved in him, nobody said, no, they, they were waiting for any way to try to prove him wrong. 
They were watching him like a hawk. Listening to all the verses, trying to find something wrong with it, trying to, but nobody ever came out. It's never been narrated, not by polytheists, not by Muslims, not by anybody in history, that at some point somebody came out and said, yeah, but we saw him learning from the Christians. The only claim was very interesting is that they claimed that he learned from a Persian man who is neither Christian nor Jew. The one argument they said that he's learning things about the Qur'an is that he learned them from a Persian man <clears throat> who was neither Christian nor Jew. Now looking at that and anybody who read the Qur'an and seeing at the depth and accuracy, for example, just read the story of Joseph, Yusuf. It is a long, detailed analysis of the life, life of the Prophet Joseph, the son of Jacob. Now, talking to some Persian guy who's not Christian or Jew, when you don't even know Persian language, right, and he knows Arabic as a second language, I don't think you can get that anywhere near that accuracy and depth in it. And that was the message of the story of Yusuf, is to respond to the claims that he has just this basis, basic knowledge of stuff. And so it went in depth to show he has whatever God allows him to have, and it's very extensive, whatever. Weren't some of the chief now, who used to be pagans, even some Jewish rabbis, there's one story, if you can go ahead and elaborate on this, where the Jewish rabbi, he had seen Prophet Muhammad, and he was like, this fits the signs of the messengers coming. But there was two that were missing, so he went to get his debt back, and he like pulled his cloak, and he was mm -hmm. like, give me my money, yeah. really obnoxious. It was yeah. all a setup mm -hmm. to see how he's going to react. Mm -hmm. But later he ended up accepting Islam. Can you go ahead and talk about this for a minute? You see, that's one point that when I discuss with our uh, brothers and sisters from the Jewish tradition, um, I asked them, why were these three huge rabbinical tribes in Yathrib? Why? Yathrib is about a four-hour drive northeast of Mecca. And it's in the hot spot of the desert. There's nothing there. It's just desert. There is not vegetation. There is not to catch up with the financial opportunities. You have to go between Mecca and Syria, which Medina is over here, outside of that. This is like no man's land right yeah. here, right? And it's very hot. But they claimed themselves that we are waiting for our great prophet that we know is going to come. And it was mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 16 through 18, that I will send a prophet, and he will be like Moses, and he will speak in my name, God is saying. And of course, every chapter of the Quran begins in the name of God. And it says that, um, that you must believe in that prophet. He's going to come, and I will, he will say what I command him. The Quran always says, قُلْ in the singular, say. He's commanded by God to say. Very clear prophecies, more clear than any messianic mm -hmm. prophecy applying to what we know to be Jesus the Messiah. In this is, so then the New Testament has the same thing. When John the Baptist was being spoken to um, by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the rabbis, that um, John the Baptist, are you the Messiah? He says, no, I'm not the Messiah. And they said, are you Elijah? Because they have all these stories about Elijah coming in and out of the, 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 the history. And he says, no, I'm not Elijah. And then they said, are you the prophet? And he says, no, I'm not the prophet. This is an interesting point because in the time of the New Testament, the Jews obviously were awaiting three prophecies. That's why they're asking him these three things. Are you the Messiah? No. Okay, well, we're waiting for an Elijah that we understand. Or are you the prophet? Now, in many biblical commentaries on the prophet, they put a cross-reference to Deuteronomy chapter 18, 16 through 17. So it's saying that the prophet is something Old Testament, New Testament confirmed. Now in Arabia, in the time of Muhammad, there were three big Jewish rabbinically laced tribes who were awaiting a prophet. And they used to say, يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا It's in Surah Al-Baqarah, that they used to say, when our prophet comes, we're going to take full control over these lands. He's going to be a dominant force, the Jews were saying to the polytheist pagans of Yathrib. So when these people of Yathrib heard about Muhammad, they came and talked to him and asked him questions. Getting to your point, whenever he came, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when the people embraced a lot of the tribal heads and so forth, embraced, embraced his message and accepted him as the final messenger of God that these Jews have been telling them about. And so it was much easier for them than the people in Mecca because they have these people telling them there's going to be a great prophet and he's going to do this, that, and say this, that, and the other. And he's going to confirm, confirm our truths and become this dominant force. So they embraced him. Well, amongst them 
was a man named Abdul, his name actually was Hussein ibn Salam. And so Hussein ibn Salam is one of the uh, prominent rabbis amongst them. Prominent now. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he was he's like, high up there with knowledge. And that's and, according to their statement, as yeah. we will see. And so he basically knew of the prophethood, and he knew that when he, the news came about Muhammad, the, the natural, see what happened to the Jewish nation, they became a race, racial, or you could even say racist movement, because they divided the world between Jews and Gentiles. Everybody who's not Jew is a Gentile. They're not the chosen people of God. They're not specially blessed like us. We are the chosen people of God, right? And so they negated that there were any ever any prophets for anybody else and so forth. And so they were saying that only prophethood can come to us. All the rest of the people were left in astray. Where the Quran says that's obviously false, they were given a special blessing and a test and they allowed their selves to become engulfed with that um, reality, that ego. So then they, they all said amongst themselves, yes, okay, maybe he fulfills a lot of what we're saying, but he's not from our, and they, they even said that because he's not from the Isaac, he's from the Ishmael lineage, and Ishmael was just from a slave woman. So this idea they developed about why he can't be accepted. So Hussein ibn Salam said, no, I'm going to go talk to him and find out. So when the Prophet Muhammad came, he came and he asked him about the three signs, and then he uh, actualized and he gave his testimony of faith. So then the Prophet Muhammad was elated, peace be upon him. This great rabbi and so forth, now all of the beautiful people of God are going to embrace the people of the book. And he said, no, 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 I can tell you right now, I'm going to be your only supporter. These people will not. And he said, why? You know, you have the Torah. You've been reading the scripture. He's like, but we don't read the Torah just for sincerity because we just want to be the people of God. We read it through a lens of a certain dynasty or tradition of the chosen people. And so the fact that you're coming from outside of our tribes, we are assuming, even though that's not clear-cut written in the prophecy, but we're assuming that that prophet should come from our blood and not from anywhere else. And so they're not going to accept you. So then he told them that I'm going to uh, show you. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad said, okay, I'm going to announce my prophethood to them. And he said, just tell them, see what they say about me. And then, and then you say I became Muslim, and then see what they say about me. And you'll see where they're coming from. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he goes to them and he says, you know, I'm the Prophet. And they said, this is nonsense, you're a liar, you're a fool, you're the you know, great-grandson great of a slave woman and all of this. And so then... He said, Hussein ibn Salam has embraced my message. They said, that's impossible, you're a liar times ten. He's the scholar, the son of a scholar, the son of a sage of our great saints, and so forth. And then he said, I'm telling you, he's, he's a Muslim. And then Abdullah ibn Hussein, he changed his name, Abdullah ibn Salam, he came, he came around. And he says, yes, I bear witness that God is one. And this is the final messenger of God that we've been the waiting The top rabbi yeah. of the Jews accepted. Not the top, but one, one of, of the top. One of the top. Yeah, yeah. And so then they all said, oh, this is nonsense and so forth. He's the liar, the son of the liar, the son now of the Now they flipped person. on him too. So then the Prophet Muhammad said, how can you say that? And then they quickly, they look at their politics. They're good at politics historically, very well-based politics. They said, well, when you said, and we don't know that he, that he said that to you, he's one of ours, even though he's so bad and we know that about him. So we said what we said the first time to protect unless we knew. Now that we know that he is showing his corruption by claiming this to you, then we have to tell you what we really know about him because we thought he was lying the first yeah. time. And so this attitude was there and Abdullah bin Hussein, he said, you know what, I'm, Abdullah bin Salam, he said, you know what, I'm not worshipping a tradition of people. And that's where names come from. Judaism, the tribe of Judah, the special people on earth. Christianity, Christ, a man named Christ, great as he may be, blessed with revelation and prophethood. He's a human. Buddhism, that Buddhism, a man named Buddha. Hinduism, the land of Hind. Uh, Baha'ism, a man named Baha'u'llah. Islam is the only name that directs you directly submission to the will of God and not any human. And so he recognized that, he knows that, and he knows that we should not attach ourselves to worldly material beliefs of religion, rather it should be a divine uh, reference that goes directly to God. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with some more here on The Dean Show. In paradise, there's no death, yeah. you know, there's no sickness, no sickness. In a world of peace and tranquility, no wars, no fighting, no fighting. 
anything that you want. Yeah. Now you can have it. Yeah. In the in the paradise. Yeah. And God wants us to have that. But the price we have to pay is give up the dunya. Back here on the Dean Show, clearing up the false fallacies and misconceptions so the truth can be uncovered because this is a treasure. It brings peace, happiness, and fulfillment in life, not only in this, but definitely in the next paradise. And Islam is calling to goodness. Now to the next misconception that people have. I got to get in a couple more, please. Mm -hmm. So we're short on time. Quickly, please address this because now people are like, look, there they go, pick it on the Jews, mm -hmm. pick it on the Christians. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Uh, this is what Islam teaches. Hate all Jews and Christians. Mm -hmm. So let's start with Excellent. this next uh, misconceptions. Excellent. See, historically, all people have bad characters. Right now, many Muslims are doing many ignorant things and foolish things. And I have no problem discussing that and saying the Muslims are not producing in the world. The Muslims are doing things backward. The Muslims are oppressing women. These are facts. And these are realities that Muslims do. Muslims doing it. Yeah. Not Islam. Yeah. You see, yeah. Muslims are different than Islam. Those are people who claim it. Judaism, which is originally a message of God revealed to a people that were blessed and chosen, as the Quran says, um, even says, that we prefer them over the nations of the world with this blessing of revelation. So Jews and Christians and all people of the earth have good and have bad. And we recognize that about them. And the world has benefited from all Jews, Muslims, Christians, and other people. But we cannot, in this political correct world, try to hide facts about any people, whether it be Muslims, Jews, or Christians. So yes, historically, Christians have been uh, disingenuous in writing Muslim history according to their crusade-based intellectual war on Islam. And Jews have, at times, as we said before, um, plotted against Muslims and, and attacked the Prophet Muhammad. And at other times, when the Christians started crusades and when the Christians banished the Jews, they were in the Muslim land. Till now, after all this talk about Iran and all of this, and they're going to destroy it. Iran has a large population of Jewish people. Yemen, they're saying Yemen, it's now the base of Al-Qaeda, has a large population of Jews. You know where they came from? They've been there ever since the Islamic Khalifa or Caliphate, uh, in which the Islamic State was ruling. And they've been there, they're very devout, they have the little curly things with the hat, traditional, orthodox very devout people, they have their place, they have their temples, they have their tribes, and they're respected for who they are. So there are good Jews and bad Jews, good Muslims and bad Muslims, good Christians and bad Christians. So if we mention something bad about a people, it doesn't mean we're against all of those people. We don't put them all in one basket. That is, of course, what people are trying to do to Muslims right now. And we're against that. We recognize that uh, Jews have done a lot for the advancement of the world. That Christians have done a lot of very beautiful acts of goodness, um, you know, building um, uh, educational centers, schools, and and hospitals for the the disenfranchised or the less fortunate people. Muslims aren't doing this, so they're superior to us in that in that we should compete with our fellow neighbors in pre presenting Islam, which is to submit to the Lord God and bring this mercy and bring this intellectualism that Jews and Christians have done. We did historically, we fell down. It's our time to show the beauty of what we are and we should mention the good about others as well as the negative and need be because it's a part of history and a reality that we have to understand in context and we're going to mention that. We got to go to another question but just to wrap this one up. So does the Quran call Muslims to kill all Jews and Christians? I challenge anybody to bring me such a verse. Um, in a nutshell, you will find a verse in a chapter that was dealt with after the Muslims were oppressed and abused for 13 years in Mecca. And then they went escaping to Yathrib. And the Muslims there, and the Muslims there built a strong um, group uh, 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 leadership over that town. Um, then after that, basically, the, uh, there were some breaking of treaties that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the initiator of writing a treaty. When those Jews said, we say you're a liar, we say you're this and that and the other, we will never believe in you, you know what he said? He had the authority to say you're banished. We will start a war with you right now. What did he do? He said, let's write the Treaty of Medina, a historical 
place in history in which a treaty was written by a theocratic ruler in which he recognized the right of non followers of his tradition to follow and to be citizens of the state and work together to protect each other and, and, and live together in harmony. And they did. But the polytheists convinced them to try to, to destroy the Muslims that they went through that and they tried to. So there was a verse revealed after breaking these treaties in which it did not say to kill Jews. It said to to fight the polytheists who have been fighting you and attacking you and oppressing you and give them four months that if they cannot make peace and they don't want to embrace Islam, then at that point they can either leave the land, which they're free to do because they're creating turmoil and bloodshed in this area, or they can stay and fight because this war is a last means to attaining peace. I mean... Nobody in the United States is going to deny that we need wars as a last result whenever things are not, there's, there's no peace. So that's the only reason it's there. Historically, God has revealed that in the Torah. It's, it's revealed historically that people have to defend themselves and establish a good moral society. And if people are trying to make turmoil or treason or fighting or internal uh, plots against the nation then that's, that's seen as, as, as something that must be stopped. And of course, we don't want to go there, but war is a nature of human beings, and God regulated it to where when the Prophet Muhammad uh, saw a dead woman after a battle, he was very upset and he told them, no woman, no child, no monk, no elderly person, do not burn down, do not cut down trees. The battle is meant to stop these men who represent an oppressive force it is meant to stop and subdue them from their um, evil ways and to attain peace for society. It's not meant to kill innocent people. So, and the Quran very clearly says, "La taqtulu anfusukum." Do not kill yourself. So, to kill yourself and all these innocents is against a clear verse of the Quran and a clear teaching of the Prophet Muhammad. They're telling us we're out of time. We, I just got to get this in the last thirty seconds. Advice, because everyone's heart can change. Everyone has until the moment of death. Hell is a reality. Paradise is a reality. Ultimate justice is on the day of judgment. Islam is calling you to do good, to be good, to develop yourself, to have the best character. All on the footing of pure monotheism. So even for those out there who are working day and night, fighting against Islam has become a big business. It's payday, yeah, paychecks, it's a right? A lot of money. So even for those that are out there and they are fighting day and night against Islam, maligning the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad and Islam and the Muslims and they're working day and night to create fear and havoc and to create this, this concept of like a boogeyman's coming to get you Sharia law and all this other phony baloney nonsense. Yeah. What advice do you have for them? My advice to you is, if you happen to be a Christian, read the Gospel of Jesus. He said, do not judge. The, judge, the people who judge will be judged a harsh judgment. Do not be a, a liar. Do not be someone who spreads corrupt ideas. Try to work together. If you don't want to embrace Islam or you don't want to believe in it, at least you can see the good in it, just like I see the good in the Gospel of Jesus, and I can work together with my Christian brothers and sisters in humanity for good causes and helping the poor and the needy and so forth. Let's work together in a morally deteriorating world to make this place a better place. Let's not try to create the clash of civilizations. And, because what's crazy is, is that our religion is against all that terrorism. But what they're doing and what some of these policies are doing is really developing the terrorism amongst Muslims. They're doing things and spreading ideas and making wars that are making ignorant Muslims that don't know about Islam and what it teaches and the nuances of Islamic law and how war engagement should be done justly and according to a certain uh, just practice. Uh, and so then some guy says, yeah, we've got to get back at those disbelievers and the invaders and all of this, so let's do this and that. So let's work against all that. Let's be a peaceful people that work for the good of society that see that, look, if I'm not convinced with your dogma and your dogmatic beliefs, then, you know, fine, but, but let's not attack each other and, you know, uh, you can say, I don't believe Islam, but yet Islam and Muslims do good here, this is what their beliefs are good, I'm going to work with them on that. That's perfectly fine, but well, this is natural. That's it. Thank you very much for being with us here on The Dean Show. We look forward no to problem. God willing. We've got so much more that we want to talk yes. to you about next time, inshallah, again. Inshallah. Thank willing. you very much. God, God Almighty reward you. Thank you. And again, from the bottom of our hearts, from my heart, definitely... 
Thank you for tuning in. And if you had some misnotions, misconceptions about Islam and Muslims, hopefully this episode helped to soften your heart a little bit and to see that, you know what, Muslims come from all walks of life. I'm an American Muslim, my guest is American Muslim, and you can be a Chinese Muslim, an Italian Muslim, because a Muslim is just like Jesus, Moses, Abraham, one who consciously submits not to one's desires or to a nationality or to a power hungry, uh, whatever it may be, it's only to submit to the one who created this whole universe and everything in it. And that's how you can get peace, happiness, contentment, paradise in the next life, and success in this life. And Islam is not calling a uh, human being to create havoc in the land, to spread corruption. And we got to hear a little bit of the truth here on the Dean Show here today with our guests. So continue to tune in to learn more. And if you have any other further questions, give us a call, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Come to the Muslims to learn. Sit with the Muslims and get to know the Muslims, those who have submitted to the one God. And then you can make your judgment from there. And we'll see you next time. Pick up the new Dunya to Deen also at thedeanshow.com. We look forward to having you back again with us. Thank you once again. Peace be unto you.